Hello, and welcome, or welcome back if you're returning. My name is Burr, and if you are a fan of MMOs, RPGs, JRPGs, obscure video games, art, or music, then you should subscribe because that's what we do here. Also, don't forget to give a like on this video because it really actually helps us out a whole lot. Go! Let's go, let's go, let's go! Ah, Burr, ever a sight for sore eyes. By the hardened look in yours, I take it you've wasted no effort in holding your axe on the battlefield. My brother and I have seen our fair share of battle as well, together with the fledgling warriors of the Maelstrom. Their training is coming along quite nicely. In fact, our exploits have earned us admirers of sorts. We recently received an anonymous invitation to participate in battle exercises at the Wolves' Den. I haven't the foggiest idea of who they are, but it would seem that you do. They mentioned you by name, and insisted you join the fray as well. That could be anyone! Perhaps they wish to settle an old score. In any case, who are we to deny them the opportunity to cower before the might of a warrior's axe? Cumber, my brother has prepared a boat for us at the Morabi Dry Docks. If it's a thrashing they crave, let's not hesitate in giving it to them. Good, you're here. As I'm sure my brother has told you, we have yet to determine the identities of these challengers. Naturally, we refused at first. Our time would be better spent training the troops. In the end, though, I could not deny their enthusiasm for battle and desire to display their combat prowess, and took it upon myself to accept. At the very least, I surmised it would provide it would prove inspiring to our men. With you at our side, it will prove a most enriching experience for all parties involved. I have not to show our men of how to wield axe, but I shall do what I can to aid you with my healing magics. When you have steeled yourself for battle, we may set out to the wolves' den. <laughs> These good old, the good old boys. <laughs> so little. Wardzoin? Question mark? That's so funny. Berlin, as I live and breathe, it's been too long. Word has it you've grown strong since the Battle of Saltstrand. Even mastered the forgotten arts of the warrior. But words are wind. Ready your axe and prove to me why my men should fear the bite of your steel. So this... This is the strength of a warrior, the art of battle celebrated in legend. Perhaps if I were a few winters younger, my efforts would have proven more than an unavailing struggle. You have met and exceeded all expectations. <laughs> Aye, pains me to say it, but we are no match for the likes of you. Gods help us if the Sahagin ever learned to throw an axe about like that. <laughs> Aha! Wait. Indeed, the student has surpassed the master, the guild master, for it was I all along. Ha ha ha. I'm so surprised. <laughs> yeah, I figured you out. <laughs> not even a quizzical lift of the brow? Surely our disguises were not as bad as all that? Or do you mean to say you've forgotten the face of your former instructor? <laughs> Worms, one. By the twelve, it is you, and Braunbar. I was expecting to crush Limsa's famed marauders under heel so easily. This is only a warm-up, yes? We've yet to even break a sweat. Uh-oh. Ugh. Oh. The inner beast. Dorgano, whatever is the matter? Those eyes, she wields the strength of her inner beast? <laughs> oh my god. Is this a Vanderbilt quest? What? <laughs> in love. Oh my god. She swings like a dream. <laughs> but 
brother. Burr, we cannot allow her to leave this pier. Someone who's my size. <laughs> Two little dragon ladies. Oh, we got her. Oh, she's strong. Whoa. <laughs> so used to these guys not being the nearly as tough as that one. I want all those moves. Do I get all those moves? But my apologies. The will of Karash burns brightly within me. Too brightly. Karash. I'm quite certain that was the reckless thrashing of one overcome by their inner beast. But that is a phenomenon seldom seen beyond the walls of my village. Who are you? And from where do you hail, friend? I am Dorgono of the Cor Corel. My home is, was, on the Azum Steppe, in islands far to the east. Or lands. We are unmatched in the ways of the axe. We are a strong people, at times too strong. There are ones like me, consumed by this thing you call the inner beast, the will of Karash. We are the Taken, cursed with an insatiable thirst for violence. Remarkable. Your people, are, your people sound not unlike those of my village. Though I suppose it stands to reason others share this gift. The strength of one's inner beast stems from a primal instinct we are all born with. It is merely a matter of learning to draw it out, a technique we warriors have long since mastered. Yet you would call it a curse. Have your people not learned to control this power? The will of Karash, this inner beast, can be controlled. Perhaps then I can return, at last return home. The Taken are sentenced to exile. That is why I traveled west, to train further in the way of the axe. If I can overcome this affliction, I may have a chance for redemption. Well, this certainly is certainly an unexpected turn of events. As our most promising recruit, I wish to see how she might fare against hardened combatants. Combatants. I never thought she could actually defeat the likes of Curious Gorge. Seems to me further time training under our roof would be a waste. Might you be willing to take her on? Well, we can't very well leave her unattended. If she should succumb to her inner beast, there's no telling what havoc she might wreak. Then I leave her in your capable hands. I'm sure you'll make a fine warrior out of her. Thank you, sir. I will do anything you ask if it means taming this wretched beast within me. I I can't believe I lost. How am I to instruct others when I am still so lacking? <laughs> Brother, I'm sorry, but I cannot guide her in the way of the warrior when I myself have stumbled on the path. Oh no, oh no. Another pity party. Oh, not this again. <sighs> No, let him be. His lack of resolve would only invite hindrances to the task at hand. This is a path he must walk alone. Come, let us go. <laughs> he always gets so sad. <laughs> With my brother engrossed in his own training for the interim, I fear I will be spread too thin overseeing the instruction of Maelstrom recruits to give Dogono proper guidance. God's help us should she be consumed by her inner beast. A worldly adventurer such as yourself no doubt has other pressing obligations, but you are the only one capable of containing Dorgano should the worst come to pass. Do you think it possible you could spare time to assist me in her training? Oh, thank goodness. I don't know what I would have done had you refused. Normally, we would gather to train at the Wolves' Den, but I believe an exception must be made for Dorgano. Yes, both for her sake and the rest of the Maelstrom recruits. For now, I would give this some thought. Pray return here in a few days' time, and I should have a solution. Well, that was interesting. Uh, there is a quest I want to just check on in Ishgard. This is the one. I wanted to do this one with you guys. Twas bitterly cold when you first came to our city, when I stood waiting for you before the Ark of the Worthy, to think that was where it all began. How much has changed since that day? Forgive me. Of late, I have been studying the works of a Belladean poet king who wrote, to ye who ask of things to come, give thought to what is past and gone. So rarely have we the luxury to reflect on the choices we made, on how they have shaped our lives and the lives of others. 
even I, a mere steward whose deeds would not merit a footnote in the annals of history, can see the value in this. I say this to you, Mr. Slid, because, because as you move, so too does the world. Pray spare a moment to contemplate your journey while you can. The road stretched on, obscured by an endless veil of snow. Somewhere in the white beyond stood the great iron gates, and on the other side a humble manservant who awaited the coming of three travelers. Hello, madam. <clears throat> a warm welcome to you, Mistress Lynn. To what do I owe the pleasure? I am rewalking, retracing my steps. <laughs> retracing your steps from those first days at Ishgard. I see. Well, no one will, could begrudge you for indulging in a little nostalgia. I am reminded how much I owe to you and yours. Lest you forget, foreign merchants were subject to a frankly unreasonable level of scrutiny until relatively recently. Not so now, however. Now, goods from every quarter of Eorzea flow into our markets, and that, my friend, is change we can all appreciate. Merchants of all nations speak a common tongue, and its words are coy. Needless to say, there is little profit to be had in prejudice, especially against those who have received the patronage of a count. Thus, when the wards of House Fortup arrived, she was glad to make their acquaintance. Gibral! That's not how you say it. What'll it be, then? Ale? Mold wine? No, no, don't tell me. Tea? <laughs> Oh, so it's to be memories then, is it? Now there's a bitter draught that I'll, that'll leave you wanting. Assuming you can remember your name, that is. Take your friend Hataru. One moment she's just another girl waiting on customers, clearing tables and so forth, and the next she's got a dozen admirers asking her after her every bloody night. And I'll be damned if I can remember how it happened. Oh. <laughs> she's queen of the night. Singing those stupid songs, dancing those daft dances. Though, to be honest, I think it was her stories that really won them over. Stories of a certain hero's grand adventures across Eorzea, told with a flair that had put a minstrel to shame. <clears throat> who doesn't love a good hero's tale, am I right? Hells, we've even got one about the man who built this tavern. Was one of the founding fathers of Ishgard, or so it goes. Now, as the Encuridian told it, Besides Haldroth, the only knights who survived the battle with Needhog were the founders of the High Houses. Of course, these days, we all know better than to put too much stock into the words of the church, eh? But there's more to our tale than just words. There's a sword, too. One which has been passed down from proprietor to proprietor since before anyone can remember. She's a rusty old bugger, but if you look closely at her handle, you can just about make out an inscription. Brothers brave and true, live well, forgotten and content. A man who forsook wealth and fame and chose the life of a humble tavern keeper. It's just a tale, of course, albeit a good one. As for the truth, who can say, friend? Who can say? He knew everyone's story, though he would never share his own. An optimist, he wanted to believe in the best in people. Sometimes that faith would be rewarded, other times betrayed. But he would listen, regardless, and he would hope. Mr. Slynn, I was but this moment thinking of you. I had hoped to speak with you at Sir Emmerich's investiture. Investiture? But circumstances conspired to prevent me from attending. Mayhap you will allow me to say now what I could not say then. On behalf of House Helianart and all of Ishgard, I offer unto you my deepest and most humble thanks. You risked your life to stand against our sworn enemy and freed us from a millennium of torment. Though we can never hope to repay you, we will ever remember you and your deeds that our children and their children's children might know the woman to whom they owe their lives. I concede that the grand investiture would have been a more fitting occasion for such words, but I could not risk them being left unspoken. What brings you this way? As you can see, Camp Cloudtrop remains much the same as it did during the war. Though we need no longer watch the skies for Dravidian outfliers, the Vanu Vanu have proven themselves similarly worthy of our attention. <sighs> oh, here they are. I say, old girl, you have the most uncanny ability to appear whenever I least expect you. <sighs> but enough about that, on a right? Ah, oh, yes, my lord. <clears throat> 
Lady Lydiette, I am pleased to report that we succeeded in infiltrating Voodoo territory, and there observed the beastmen harvesting crystals at several different sites. Based on the volume of crystals acquired during our period of surveillance, I have prepared an estimate of how much time I believe it will take the Voodoo to gather sufficient crystals for another summoning. I have also taken the liberty of drafting several proposals outlining how the Rose Knights might prevent such an eventuality, such as raiding these sites and securing their stores, as well as a detailed assessment of the risks involved should you choose to proceed. <coughs> Little smarty. By the fury. I gathered you were clever, but I was not aware that you were capable of this. With respect, you are wasted on your master. <laughs> Hardworking, full of potential. Aye, I think there is a place for you here with the Rose Knights, if you would have it. <gasps> that you would even consider taking me into your service is a tremendous honor, my lady. And were I free to do so, I should gladly accept. But I am pledged to another, as you well know. Regrettable, but understandable. I take comfort in the fact that a youth of your talent and character will never want for opportunities. Pledge to another, you rascal. I thought I saw you whispering in young Zealot's ear the other day. You certainly wasted no time wooing our newest maid. There will be no secrets between us. You must tell me everything. Where you've been sneaking off to together, what adventures you've been having, every little detail. And don't you dare leave anything out. Don't you dare. I am sure you will not. In any event, you have jointly exceeded my expectations. I grant you leave to return to the city. Should the need arise, I shall call upon you again. Thank you, my lady. I believe we shall do as you suggest. Until we meet again, Mistress Lynn. <clears throat> I need the deets! Need all the deets! Not so fast! The next airship isn't due for another hour. We have so much to talk about. How to write? How to write? Goober. Big ol' goober. For all the ladies' disdain, it was an old familiar dance. To her, Lord Eminem would always be the boy fumbling for a compliment. And perhaps there was comfort in that. A memory of home on the bleak frontier. A thousand pardons, Mistress Lynn. Had I known you were planning to pay us a visit, I would have seen that you received a proper reception. A feast, perhaps. Or at least a formal welcome with the men in full dress. No worries. You have more than earned it. One need only look to the pilgrims who came in their droves to pray before the relief to see the truth of that. Some abide in silence, while others shed tears. Not for sorrow, you understand, but for joy. Joy at being released from Midhog's torment. <clears throat> Sir Redwald, the shipment has been unloaded and the quartermaster confirms that all supplies are accounted for. Mistress Lynn, are you here on official business? <laughs> A journey to remember and reflect. Aye, much has changed since first we came here together. Since I abandoned you to follow the heretic's trail alone. <clears throat> Come, my lord. Mayhap you recall the survivor whom you carried back to Falcon's Nest that day. Well, his wife but recently gave birth to their first child. Ah. Is that so? Well, well. Mayhap I should pay him a visit. Well, well. Though he would doubtless be honored, my lord, you need not put yourself to, much, to such trouble. Your responsibilities as count surely leave little enough time as it is. Think not on that. I am still me, and you are still you. Whatever our respective titles, I would speak to you as a friend. <clears throat> this preoccupation with position and power has sowed no end of discord between our two houses. To the great detriment of our nation. It is especially galling when one considers that much of what we have achieved was by virtue of our blood and not our character. So call me Count if you must, but know that I take no pride in it. Mayhap one day when I have earned it, I will, but not today. <laughs> <clears throat> Do 
still himself, is he? An honorable man, mindful of tradition, he was loath to accept the assistance of a foreigner in exile. But when forced to confront bitter truths, he looked within and found himself wanting. Pride to be damned, then, if it lead one astray. He would set aside his prejudices and join hands with this gifted outcast for the greater good of Ishgard. Two foreign heretics against two knights of the Heaven's Ward. Under the watchful gaze of the Fury, they would fight, and the winner's claims would be proven true. It was the opening gambit of a greater game whose stakes would remain unknown for some time. You are Mistress Lynn, if I am not mistaken. We have met, though I am sure you do not remember. It was a seeming lifetime ago, when you answered the Archbishop's summons. I... <clears throat> I often come here to reflect upon all that has come to pass, and when I saw you gazing at the Holy Vault, I thought perhaps that you had to. You turned our world upside down, everything we held dear, for change, for the truth. They say it had to be done, that his grace sought godhood. If so, then perhaps it was the Fury's will that you prevail. But to say it, to believe it, I know that no man is without sin, but he... He was pious and humble, wholly devoted to the church and to his people. Mm-hmm. He's a really good actor. I knew him, miss, and he was a good man. Whatever else he may have been, I will remember him as a good man. To walk the righteous path, to live for the sake of others. To rise to the highest station, yet remain powerless to bring an end to your people's suffering. What price salvation, then? What sacrifice beyond reason? For uneasy lies the head that wears a crown. Who are you? <clears throat> Mr. Spur is odd abyss. I am both flattered and surprised that you should remember my small role in this tale, given the grandeur of your subsequent endeavors. Though I must confess to having derived some selfish pleasure from donning the garments of the shinobi once more, I am honored to have been able to assist in freeing General Robin from his ca captivity. And I believe I speak for all of my countrymen when I say that we are most grateful to have been granted the opportunity to contribute to the restoration of the Scions. Much has changed, it is true, and much may never be as it once was. But in watching you and yours rise from the ashes and rebuild, I am reminded that we must never give in to despair, for there is always something much which may yet be saved. Will you be traveling to Ulda next? If so, I would ask a favor of you. I have prepared a special unguent in to aid in General Robin's rehabilitation. Injuries such as his must be tended to daily, even long after they have healed. You need only deliver it to his man, Commander Swift. He will see that the Flame General receives it. Greetings, Bear. What is it you have there? Here you go. Unjud, I was not aware the general required such stuff, and one of our Dolman friends made this for him, did she? Very well, I shall be sure to pass it on. Actually, wait here. We have just this moment concluded a meeting, and I expect he would be glad to speak with you before returning to the palace. Let's see how swift Commander Swift really is. So, Commander Swift tells me that you came all this way to deliver Unjud. <laughs> yeah. Haley, she says. Ha, ah, well, may happen it best it is best to be prudent. The gods alone know why you agreed to deliver it for her though. Unless you mean to favor me with that rematch I requested. <laughs> oh, funny joke. Hilarious. <laughs> I jest less. You are on a journey of reflection, are you not? I Merwim said as much. 
And now you want to relive the moment you pulled me from the pit Ilbert left me in to rot. It shames me to think of it, that I was so blind to his hatred. Though Lorito tells me that it was not always so, that Ilbert admitted to him he once believed that I would return to Alamigo at the head of an army. But years passed and I did nothing. For all my accomplishments, for all my wealth, power, and influence, I did not to better the plight of my people. Not for lack of trying, but Ilbert didn't know. He thought the bull of Alamigo had grown fat and complacent. That my story set a bad example for our countrymen. Forget your homeland and chase the old on dream. A fine, impossible dream which gave men the strength to endure their hardships and try to make new lives for themselves here. So the dream had to die. He would kill me, stir up the disillusion, arm them at the monetarist's expense, and then... And then... Forgive me. The scions paid the price of my failings. The gods know I have no shortage of debts to repay, a vows to keep and duties to dis discharge. But mark me well, lass, there will be a reckoning. Mayhap not today, mayhap not tomorrow, but a reckoning there will be. A reckoning. I feel like we did have a reckoning. Eventually. There's definitely a quest called a reckoning. A refugee of a fallen nation, he had risen from the depths of poverty to claim a seat on the syndicate. Yet, for all his great deeds, one was left undone. And like sands through an hourglass, the years slipped away, taking with them an old friend's hope. That story is really sad. That, I almost want to cry <laughs> thinking about it. Because, like, you know, you grow up and you have friends. And then you have one friend and you think they've betrayed you. And it's just life, you know? Like, you get an opportunity... Sometimes you do to make things better. You have to just be a little selfish sometimes. What are you talking about? We do it out here, dude. By the fury, is that you, Mr. Slid? Forgive me, but what reason could you possibly have for returning to this godforsaken place? Mayhap it is fate which brings you here on this day of introspection and reflection. We are come to Gorgogni Mills to accept the surrender of a half dozen heretics who once fought for the Lady Iceheart. If you are intending to visit the cellars, I would ask that you do nothing to unsettle them. Now listen here, you pack of heretics. Wait, I know you. You were at the amphitheater with the Dragon Slayer. I, I suppose we owe you an apology. When you came to us seeking to parlay, we were sure it was a scheme to lure out our lady. We were sure about a lot of things. When she first shared her revelation, when she told us that she was not Saint Shiva reborn, we assumed it was a test. For had we not prayed for salvation, had she not descended to deliver us from evil, she replied that our prayers were but fuel for a fever dream, a construct born of desperation and denial. She was no savior, she said. But when we marched upon Ishgar, regardless, she pulled us from the brink of oblivion and implored us to find another way. And here we are, ready to lay down our arms at last. She considered you a friend. Had things had been different, mayhap we could have been friends too. Farewell. Oh, everything's so sad. Forsaken by gods and men, they found salvation in a revelation. They would take up arms against their own kind to set ancient wrongs to right. Cut out Ishgard's festering heart, and the war would be over. This they knew, believed with all their being, until their savior told them their efforts would be for naught. Hey all, so I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me. If you liked this video, please like this video, because that'll help gather more folks to the video of the channel. We are aiming for 1k, so we're almost there. Also, if you are new and you haven't yet, please subscribe. Uh, we have a Discord link that is very, very fun. That link will be in the description underneath this video. And I also have all my other social media links and stuff that will be under there as well. And also, I do have a Patreon if you're interested. That link is below and that does help <laughs> get us uh, to support the channel so I can be here and do more stuff with you guys. Alright, from uh, all of us to all of you. <laughs> Bye.